All right, Fishaholics, just finished packing up the runner. Actually heading back to Jersey right now for a few days, and I'm in Montauk. It's about a three hour drive straight back, but uh, we're gonna take a little bit of a detour, and it's actually Halloween day right now, so happy belated Halloween. And uh, I guess, you know, what we can say is what a beautiful day for Halloween. It's been raining all morning, it's about 9.30. Rained all day yesterday, and uh, it's supposed to rain the rest of the day today, and basically looking at the radar, Right now we've got like green screen all the way from PA to Montauk. But uh, what we're gonna try and do today is take a little detour, not go straight back. And my original plan was actually fish the North Fork yesterday all day, then crash in the truck and fish the South Shore today, and then be in Jersey tonight. Um, but um, we're just gonna wing the South Shore today, scrap the plan for yesterday, and we're just gonna see what we catch. Uh, I gotta be back in Jersey by tomorrow. And uh, I love fishing my way back because uh, there's potential, especially in the fall, when fish are migrating to catch fish in areas that, say, maybe don't have fish uh, during other times of the season. But uh, since I didn't go to the North Fork yesterday, actually, I did fish yesterday morning here and got on a nice little interesting bite, which uh, I'm going to switch it over and have you guys check that out because I think you find it'll be interesting. But right here, we got a new addition to the arsenal, which we're going to break out once we get out a little bit further west. So uh, once we get out to the South Shore, I'll uh, switch it back, but uh, check out what we caught yesterday morning. All right, so just made it to the beach and uh, the water's looking really juicy and uh, we're towards the end of the flood tide. And that's typically when I like to fish the sand beaches, uh, I would say like at a higher water level. So the end of the flood, beginning of the outgoing, and uh, we're just gonna start plugging away, see what we can find. Got a nice uh, trough up ahead of us, which uh, hopefully will have some deeper water closer to shore and uh, have some fish pushing in there looking for something to eat. All right, so I was here yesterday morning and uh, caught quite a few fish, but the water was a little bit murkier. And uh, we're gonna start off with a Fishaholic Finback Shad in Wonder Bread and a Fishaholic SNS one ounce jig head in Wonder Bread. And we're gonna try it, but being that the water looks a little bit cleaner, clearer, this morning we might have to switch to a more natural color. But we'll give this a shot. Oops, had a bite. Good sign. About five casts in. Oh, another bite. Wow. There's a good amount of fish here. There he is. Fish on. On the Wonder Bread. <laughs> that wave almost like destroyed this fish. Little guy, but it's a fish. And you know, Halloween is tomorrow. I would say like over the last couple years, like a week before Halloween, leading up to Halloween, the stripers start to get a little bit smaller out here in Montauk. But, you know, as we get into November, we could uh, possibly see a herring run and maybe get, you know, a bigger concentration of some bigger fish. Oh, it's another one. Feels a little bit bigger. Right at the lip. <laughs> Never mind, still pretty small. But hey, you know, it's some action. Future of the sport right there. <laughs> All right, so uh, not too bad. At least we're getting on a bite uh, pretty quick and easy, which I kind of anticipated because yesterday morning, I was here fishing with my dad's cousins, Tom and Chip, and uh, all three of us got on a similar bite, relatively easy, mostly small fish, but I call one fish like 26 inches, which will really be our goal for today to get something like in the upper 20 inch class, and that'll be considered a big one. There's one. Oh. It's a little bit better. All right, well, it's probably like 23, 24 inches, maybe 25. Definitely getting somewhere. 
I'm enjoying it. So the setup that I decided to use this morning, I chose to use to keep it nice and sporty in the surf with the smaller fish. And I'm using my nine foot medium power, moderate fast action, St. Croix Triumph Surf Rod with my Tsunami 5000 Evict with a looser drag just to have some fun. And I'm using about 30 pound Green Moss Power Pro Braid as my main line, tied direct to a little barrel swivel and about a four foot section a 40 pound fluorocarbon tied direct to a little tactical angler's clip and I'm clipping on my Fishaholic Wonderbread Finback Shad. All right, let's see if anybody else is home. Just saw a seal, believe it or not, which I was really surprised. Usually you don't see too many seals snooping around the ocean beaches, but uh, hopefully he moves on quick. Oh, and there he is right there. I hope he doesn't spook the fish away. We were definitely getting on some decent little action and one seal in cleanish type water can totally ruin a bite. All right, well, I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but since seeing the seal, we uh, took about 15, 20 casts, started working our way down the beach and uh, like a light switch, <laughs> the bite has totally just shut off. All right, so I'm gonna make a quick little color change and see if that makes a difference. I'm gonna try a little olive over white and silver flake. You can pick these shads up at JNH Tackle or JNH.com. We'll put the link down in the description. All right, that looks good. There he is, fourth cast, boys. All right, well, it's a pipsqueak, but you can still learn a lot from that it's just right there. You know, never leave a spot once the bite dies before switching and trying another color. There's another one. Oh. Really cool how I caught this one too. Let me explain after I release them. All right, so I made the cast and I let the shad sink all the way down to the sand or the bottom. And basically I took like a few cranks of the reel and I could feel this jig just bouncing on that sand like this. So I knew I, w I was right on the sand or really close to it. And then that fish just thumped it and basically picked it up off the bottom. Look at that little baby. Wow. So made it out to about middle south shore and it is honking here. Really, really windy, gnarly conditions, probably even windier than it was out in Montauk or the wind is just picking up as we're kind of driving further west into, I guess, the bulk of the storm. It's not raining though, at least. That's a good thing. And I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, first part of the video. Got on a nice little bite, nothing big, but uh, it was still interesting to see uh, just what the change of color of bait that you're throwing can make a difference in catching a few more fish and getting a few more bites. So uh, now for this spot, we're gonna bust open our brand new 6000 Tsunami Salt X and uh, put it to the test and see what we can catch. Just about ready for action. I hope you can hear me all right. But we've got the 6,000 Salt X paired with the nine foot Triumph, 30 pound Green Moss Power Pro Braid, and about a four foot section of 40 pound fluorocarbon leader to a TA clip and an A27 diamond jig with a single hook and a little bucktail hair on there. It's really, really windy out here and gnarly. I guess we're just gonna try our best, start working west and uh, see what's biting. So let's make our first cast with uh, the new 6000 Salt X. I'll let it sink down to the bottom. This ocean is angry today, really angry. And any fish are probably gonna be 
you know, in this white water, maybe right on the edge of the lip, or they're gonna be sitting close to the sand. Oh, Woo. wow, first cast of the clump of weeds. Rollers are coming in hot. Jeez, that was like up to my chest. Almost felt like I was gonna get knocked over. And still a lot of weeds. We're gonna make a little move down the beach, maybe like 50 or 100 yards, see if there's less weeds. But the reel is nice, it's uh, really smooth, casting really well. So far, so good. Oh, even worse down here. All right, we're packing it in from this spot. Actually, it looks like the sun is sneaking through the clouds. We're trying to, but to the north of us, it's uh, pretty black. So we've got more rain on the way. Wind is picking up, and uh, it was like unfishable here because of all the weeds, but uh, so far, so good. <laughs> the uh, reel is really smooth on the retrieve, and the bale didn't flip back over uh, when we were launching our diamonds way out there. And we were getting into definitely a strike zone area in the surf, but just uh, the weeds pile it up on the line and then it would pile up on the lure. So now all we gotta do is test the drag and hopefully at our next spot, whether we go east a little bit further or west a little bit, we'll uh, find some biters. All right, let's see if the water's any cleaner here and any fishier. All right, kind of a good sign, no weeds on my first cast, or not a lot of weeds. We moved about like two, three miles east of where we started. That could make all the difference. Come on, fish, give me a little bump. There he is, fish on. Woo! Finally. Waiting for that first thump. Hey. Quality schoolie right there. <laughs> Pretty big, much bigger than all the little fish we caught yesterday morning in Montauk. He ate it deep too. Way in the back of his throat. But one single hook comes out nice and easy. Send him back on his way. All right, let's do that again. Oh, there's another one. Crush it right in the wave. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Just look at all the weeds sliding down my line. Woo, pipsqueak, holy crap. All right, so I moved down about 100 yards because for whatever reason, it seems like those weeds, I think, that were further west where we started at our first spot are pushing down the beach. Like where we caught those two fish is like unfishable now, just so much weed. But over here, it looks a lot cleaner and I'm only 100 yards to the east. So we'll try it and I guess just keep moving east if we have to, to stay in the clean water. one right there. It's another one. All right, so it helped out making a little bit of an adjustment. All right, well, I don't know how much longer we're gonna stay here if the fish are gonna all end up being that small, but we'll try, I guess, for another 20, 30 casts, see if we hook into anything larger. Whoa, that was a hard hit. Jeez. 
crushed it. A little bit bigger one. There he goes. Whoa! That fish crushed it on the drop. That's awesome. <laughs> this one feels a little bit bigger too. All right, there we go. It's probably the biggest one of the day. Maybe like 26 inches or so. And uh, you see, I had to modify my diamond jig if you saw my last video. So I'll put uh, the link to these hooks down in the description below if you're looking to try and modify your diamond jigs. So you see, I didn't need much distance to catch this little guy. But the larger size schoolies, whew, I've uh, been needing to cast way out there, and I'm, you know, it seems like I'm getting the larger bites on the end of the cast. So having just a single hook with a little bit of deer hair, I'm allowed to cast this diamond jig a little bit further. Just dunked the salt axe really nice in a sandy wave. All right, that was like a pretty good dunk and the reel still feels really smooth. Whoa, nicer fish. This fish nailed it and ripped off a ton of drag. This might be a keeper or just use the power of the wave to pull hard. It's hard to tell sometimes. That was sick though. Really fun. Oh, I gotta keep on there. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this fish pulled like a 30 incher using the wave for some power. Just a gorgeous fish. I love when they're colored like this. They even have like a purple kind of like hue to them when they're this color. All right, Fishaholics, we're back in the studio, aka my truck. So pretty sweet, we got on a solid bite out there and uh, you know, the fish were slightly larger than what we caught yesterday morning in Montauk. Uh, so that was a pretty good bonus and uh, put a good bend in the Triumph and uh, helped me test the drag a little bit on the Salt X. And after testing this reel today, I'm really impressed. You know, I dunked it many times, uh, intentionally, unintentionally, because I was getting pounded by waves full of sand and we're hitting the reel. And I didn't feel any grinding from a single grain of sand in that reel. So um, just after today, I could tell that uh, so far, uh, this reel is gonna be one of my favorite reels in my arsenal right next to my VS250, my VS150, and uh, it's gonna be ahead of the game of the Tsunami Shield and the, and the Evix that I used yesterday morning. It's definitely gonna be a game changer. And uh, it actually comes in a sweet little case like this. Big thanks to Tsunami for sending it my way. This video isn't sponsored by them, but they did hook me up with the reel. And this case is really sweet because it, it's like a camera case and I can see myself using it for traveling with the reel, which is pretty sweet and it has the different little fittings for the reel and for the handle. And then also it comes with a little manual pickup conversion kit, which um, I can tell you right now, I'm 100% gonna switch it over because I just find a manual pickup to be uh, a lot faster because I've been doing it for so long with the van stall and also find it just to be one less thing to go wrong or break. And especially like say you make a long cast or a hard cast with a big plug and that bail flips over for whatever reason, like whoosh, your plugs gonna go flying into the distance and there goes a $20, $30 plug. So um, I'm you know, definitely more of a manual pickup uh, kind of guy. And also it comes with a little wrench so you can switch the handle side and I think take apart the spool or you know, I'm not really sure of the full functionality of the wrench, but uh, it's a pretty sweet little setup and I can't wait to put it to the test even more. And I guess that's about it guys. So uh, be sure to help support the channel by checking out some of the Fishaholic merch. I'll put the link down in the description or you can check out the Teespring Fishaholic banner below this video if you're watching on a mobile device. And uh, yeah, post a comment if you got any questions, tackling equipment down below like always. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'll see you guys out on the water or in the next vid. I gotta get some grub, haven't eaten anything since uh, like 5, 6 a.m. So sometimes making these videos for you guys, I like torture myself until I catch fish. But uh, it's worth it in the end. 
So, um, like always, never forget, live to fish, fish to live. I'll see you guys in the next one.